Let us hope Rod Stanton's trip to Zalabar in Pendrang proves Sir Eric dead beyond any possible doubt. Just decoded from our agent in Pandrang, Tal Shan. Received radio report from Stanton. His plane forced down in Himalayas. Have mountain men searching. No word as yet. so fast that it catapulted from the ledge above us. That's all it saved us. Well, I must admit, I didn't think I'd live to talk about it. It's a plane, all right. Taoshan? on that point. Hey, is Sir Eric around, Marla? Sir Eric Hazarius is supposed to be dead. Here in Pendrang, like every place else. Oh, sure, sure, Marla, but calling him Jeffrey London now after having called him Sir Eric for so long, well, gee, it ain't easy. Where is he? He's out with Melbourne. Well, here's Melbourne now. Too bad Mr. London didn't come back with you. Got a very important radio message here from Aga Aga he'd like to hear. Mr. London, not to me, but does it matter? Read it. Rod Stanton and Marjorie Elmore survived plane crash in Himalayas. Mountain men rescued them. Now en route to Pendrang via Maraba Pass, as signed by Miller. 
Oh, Dr. Elmore, the head of our archaeological expedition, has a daughter named Marjorie. The girl is unimportant, but Rod Stanton. He's coming here for one reason. Obviously, the United Peace Foundation has assumed correctly that it was Sir Eric Stubble who died in the accident. Yeah, but how is their agent Stanton going to prove that Jeffrey London is really Sir Eric Hazarius? You'll never be able to recognize Sir Eric now that he's shaved off his beard. You missed the point, Marlowe. If he uncovers sufficient evidence that Sir Eric is alive, he will continue with his investigation. Yeah, and maybe find out that a secretary like you is really the man behind us. Well, we've got to get rid of Stanton, that's all. Of course, but not before we have found out who is associated with him. But who do we start looking for? That man Ringo was talking to by radio when we let Ringo have it? While him, he must have helped to rescue Stanton. Oh, I see. Then you figure that he'll bring Stanton here and we can... Oh, it's going to be easier than that. Stanton will insist on taking the girl to her father at my expedition's headquarters. Mm -hmm. If my calculations are correct, the cavern containing the most important clue to the lost city of the jungle lies somewhere about there. That's close to the pool of light. Dr. Elmore, I presume? Marjorie, where did you come from? How did you get here? Stowed away on Mr. Stanton's plane. Rescued by Tal Shan when we made a forced landing. Oh, I've been having some real adventures. I'm certainly glad I didn't know about all this until now. I must confess I'm delighted to have you with me again. This is Rod Stanton, my father, Dr. Elmore. How do you do, How Doctor? Do you? And Tal Shan. Step forward and take a bow, Tal. Uh, we've known each other quite a while. Thank you, gentlemen. Uh, this is my assistant, Dr. Greb. How do you do? How do, you do? Glad to know you. Pleasure, I assure you. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have to get back to the excavation. Headquarters. Calling headquarters. Station number one, calling headquarters. This is headquarters. Come in, station one. Stanton and Tal Shan are in Dr. Elmore's office. They just got here a few minutes ago, bringing Marjorie Elmore with them. Mr. Levin, did you hear that? I heard, Johnson. So Tal Shan is the man working with the Stanton, huh? Wait here. I've got an idea. The United Peace Foundation is going to have two less agents. If Sir Eric. Uh, you better start calling him Jeffrey London like the rest of us. All right, Jeffrey London, that. If he were half as efficient as I am, nobody would be able to follow him. Mm. Now, you're good, Gaffron. But even you can't control people like you can your test tubes. And uh, why is Mr. London in Pendran? To find a certain mineral for you that we know is here. Yes, the rarest, most important mineral in the world, meteorium, atomic weight 245. The only practical defense against the atomic bomb depends upon it. Huh? Where is it? Oh, you'll get what you want sooner or later. Then you'll be famous, and Mr. Lennon will sell your defense for the atom bomb to some country with so much money that we'll all be rich. Yeah, which will probably start the last great war. But that is no concern of mine. I want the great scientists of the world to bow to Ernst Gaffron. Nothing more. I want to be rich, and you want to be famous. So you better start worrying about this Rod Stanton, because if Sir Eric don't stop him, he's liable to stop us. I told just now, Lakana, I didn't know that Tao was married. Your surprise, Mr. Stanton, left no doubt of that fact. And a very pleasant surprise, I assure you. Thank you, Rod. Hello, Lakana. The traveling Shan? Are you Rod Stanton? Our chief of police, Captain Hammond. Perhaps it's more precise to say the gentleman who enforces Indra's laws for her. Fair enough either way. Well, are you or aren't you? Yes, I'm right, Stanton. And I'm just as curious to meet Indra as she is apparently curious to meet me. Shall we go? <laughs> and so I have to do what I just explained solely because Stanton has ground to suspect Sir Eric's identity. 
Very well, Mr. Malburn. We are allies. I control the people of Pendre, the police, this casino. You have a fabulous secret you wish to preserve. By so much, we need each other. But something like this must be done my way. What do you suggest? That depends upon my interview with Rod Stanton. I know Tal Shan. If I send Stanton to you, then use the plan you have just explained. And if you don't send him to me? Return here, and I'll give you my decision. Seven on the black, and then you play the ten on the red. There. That system's infallible. It'll beat the wheel every time. Too bad you can't prove it till your next check comes. That won't be for a long time. And don't ask me for an advance. You're a curiosity, Stan. First man ever to get into Pendrang after winter really got started in the Himalayas. Just lucky, I guess. Doc Harris does the introducing. See you later, Mr. Stan. Mountain water doesn't agree with me. This really fixes it. Anytime you don't like it, let me know. I'll remember that. <clears throat> this way. Drang is honored by your visit, Mr. Stanton, the United Peace Foundation's best agent. If you know that much, Indra, then you know my investigation's unofficial. I have no police powers, national or international. You're careful to obey the laws of the localities in which you operate. I know. Won't you sit down? Thank you. Why have you come here? I have reasons to believe that Sir Eric Cazarius is here and I hope to prove it. Sir Eric Cazarius? But he's dead. That's what he's tried to make the whole world believe. I don't. Well, whom do you suspect? Jeffrey London. Oh, come, Mr. Stanton. My plane was forced down. Yes, I heard. And the removal of the parachutes compelled me to think there was sabotage. It was anticipated that you would not survive to tell about it. Is that it? Well, you have a point there. Here's another reason. A man named Ringo Ringo was murdered in his plane at our field. We're investigating now. And London must have been near the plane, or somewhere near the landing field, at the time of the murder. Marlowe and Johnson were with him. You're interested in only one thing, aren't you, Mr. Stanton? World peace. Perhaps Jeffrey London should be investigated after all. Why don't you pay him a visit? With my permission, of course. I hope you have better luck than I've had. What do you mean? I've never met Jeffrey London, only his secretary, a Mr. Malburn. The death of that pilot was as much a shock to us as it must have been to you. Dr. Grepp arrived in his car when Mr. London landed and brought Mr. London here at once. Having the word of a reputable witness like you, Dr. Grepp, means a lot to me. But when do I see Mr. London? As his secretary, I should be able to give you a direct answer, but Mr. London is an unpredictable man. I beg your pardon, Mr. Melbourne, but I'd like to ask Mr. Stanton why it doesn't include Mr. Johnson and me as reputable witnesses. You've always been employed by Sir Eric Cazarius. Are you now? <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that remarkable how that man's ill repute flourishes even after he's dead? <laughs> Isn't it? As if he still lives and haunts the peace of the world. Mr. London detested Sir Eric. He engaged Mr. Marlowe and Mr. Johnson only because they served the warmonger faithfully. Would you like to see their letters of recommendation? No, don't bother. There's an old saying, like master, like servant. Excuse me, gentlemen. I'll go to Chief Hammond, as you suggested about Ringo. Do it by all means. A fine police officer, Hammond. I've already met the chief. Thank you. Good day, gentlemen.
Indra sending him here means that she agrees with us. You better leave now. giving them to you? No, I told you he wouldn't. I explained that you knew his brother, who needed him badly. That is true, and I shall give them to him. But not before we take from them what belongs to us. Johnson's mission at Pendrang connected with a pool of light. That's a sacred pool on the other side of the lake, close to Dr. Elmore's headquarters. It was just like you figured. Ringo was carrying this. I found it in his cap, so I substituted your message for it. What does it mean? Meteorium 245, Flaus City of the Jungle. I don't know, I wish I did. Our message to Stanton and Tel Shine about the pool of light won't be so mysterious to them. The pool of light? Yes. There is a legend that its waters hide the secret of the lost city. carrying dynamite. They're going to blow up the pool. It will cause great trouble in Pendrang if they do. The pool of light is sacred. We may be able to reach them from the water. <laughs> <laughs> 